25 matchup. It was a game where you guys would just keep throwing haymakers at each other, and you guys come out on top. Just, you know, how much is, is this something you can file away, and as, as the weeks go by, something you can look back upon? Uh, I think it's definitely. It was a crazy game, first and foremost. Uh, I thought Wake Forest they played an unbelievable game. Uh, it was a dog fight all the way to the end. Glad we came out with a W, but I think it's just a game, man. It just showed how much heart we had. We battled to the very end. Uh, we came out with a W. I mean, both sides of the ball were just battling the whole game. It was just one of those slugfests, man. You know, uh, it was just it was a fun game to be a part of. Hopefully, you don't have to be another game like that. But it was fun, man. It was a great game. You know, uh, but having that experience of been in that atmosphere where you're mm -hmm. like, oh, we, we're, we're just going to take for tat and, and you guys come out on top. How much does having that experience getting in that, in that kind of situation, how much is that something you can you know, use later on? I think definitely use a lot. Uh, use a lot of it later on. You know, the way our offense, man, we just kept scoring, kept kept responding to adversity that was coming at us. We were up early, 14-0. Then we kind of game got got tied. They were up a little bit. Then we just kept battling back and forth. So it's definitely something that we can be able to use as an offense to be able to grow from, to be able to learn from this game. Now, top ten matchup, college game day is coming. It's mm -hmm. going to be a nighttime game. Just describe to me the the kind of atmosphere it'll be for this game coming. It's going to be great, man. Uh, seen something. I think we posted that. It's already sold out. The game's already sold out. So it's going to be rocking. The stadium's going to be packed. Uh, college game day is going to be there. So it's super exciting. Uh, NC State, they're a great football team, and I'm excited to get to work. Kyle was talking earlier that watching last year, uh, mm -hmm. wide open wide receiver balls tipped at the line of scrimmage. Another wide open guy because they jump off sides, they blow a dent. Like there were opportunities there. But it was kind of also kind of that stretch where yeah. you guys started really not playing well. What do you remember mm -hmm. about that? The fans rushed the field. Y'all must yeah. get off the field. What do you remember about that game and the aftermath? Definitely. I think the biggest thing I remember, remember losing the game, remember how I felt. Uh, definitely felt like there was a lot of plays that I left out there that I wish I had back, that the throws that I missed, uh, like the one of Jay Ross in overtime, wish I would have had that throw back. A bunch of throws, the decision, I think, uh, with the tight end over the middle, got tipped for a pick. Uh, just a lot of third down stuff. I wish you know, there was a couple plays, could have done this better. I think it was, I think that's the main stuff. Like Just little stuff that I feel like I wish I had back on just different decision making, putting the ball in a better spot. And yeah, it definitely did suck losing. You know, I hate losing, but I mean, coming this year, I'm excited to be able to play against them. It's going to be a great game. They're a great team. Looking forward to be able to play in NC State here at home. Could you walk us through that two point conversion play to Bo Collins where you're literally throwing it off one foot? What did you mm -hmm. see there and just describe what you were <coughs> thinking in that moment? Yeah, I know the biggest thing coming in with the two point, Coach Rich told me on the sideline before, once we go for two, is just be able to not take a sack. And like two points, kind of like fourth down, you don't, you don't want to have the ball end up in your hands because the two point conversion is the last play. So I was just trying to be able to just stay up, and just try not to take a stack. And Bo did a, Bo did a great job working scramble drill, coming back open, getting it open, and uh, he made a great catch right there. Did you kind of lock in on Bo at that moment? Uh, at that point, I was just kind of looking. I was looking, looking at that side, and they had a look on the boundary side. Uh, it wasn't what we were looking for, so I came back to the field. They had a really good coverage and dropped, uh, like basically cover two right there. Did a good job for it, and Bo just kind of he was running corner, kind of came back with the scramble drill, and he just got open. Did a good job with that. Did you feel close to going down at any point, or that maybe they blow the play dead? Yeah, no, I definitely did. Uh, when the first guy he got a hold of me, I was just trying to be able to just stay up as long as I could, just be able to like be able if I could see anybody just to throw the ball up. And luckily, Bo Bo got open, uh, put a good ball on him. He made a great catch, he made a good play. Do you allow yourself to think about the progression that you've made from last year to so far, the start mm -hmm. of this year? Allow myself to think about it. Yeah, I mean, do you kind of dwell on it at all, or do you like look forward and say, "There are more things I have to do." To uh, keep this thing going? I think there's always more things I gotta do. I think mean, each and every week, man, my biggest thing is just to learn and get better, and be able to grow from last week. Uh, I did a lot of stuff well last week, but a lot of that, all that stuff doesn't carry over. You know, this is a new week, and I gotta be able to go out there and produce it right again, and even do even better. And that's my goal. So. Everything from last week doesn't carry over. It's a new week, so a new way. I got to go out there and practice on Monday. Got to go out there and go every single day, come out there and prove and show everybody who I am. And I feel like just, just continue to keep learning, man. There's a lot of stuff I can grow from, but I'm just excited just to be able to keep learning and be able to just keep working, man. We have a great team, and every day I come out to practice. I'm just excited to practice, man. I know you love trying to block things out, good and bad, what people are saying, but is there a part of the inside that's a little extra satisfied or a little bit of 
told you so? Nah, not at all, man. Uh, man, ain't nothing like that at all. Uh, I'm just happy that, man, I'm just happy just to be able to play football, man. Uh, just blessed uh, each and every day. Come out here with just a gratitude, be able to just walk and be able to play football, play with my brothers on this team, be able to be around this coaching staff, be able to talk with everybody here at media. Uh, I just have just a sense of gratitude and joy, just to be able to play football, man. I think that's how I just wake up every day, just being, just being, just being thankful. Maybe along those lines, that was said after the game, but he'd never been happier for a guy than seeing mm -hmm. you have that success. Does it? Can you kind of comprehend how much everybody in this space is rooting for you and is pulling for you, and, and mm -hmm. kind of understand why that is, or how much has that helped you? It definitely has helped me, man. You know, uh, having supporters, uh, everybody on the coach staff, like Coach Sweeney, and a lot of other coaches as well, be able to have their have your back, to be able to just be there, like, hey, man, you, you get it, you just get it going. And it's been it's been great, man. You know, be able to have people that believe in you, real genuine people that believe in you, even when you've been down. So I'm, it means a lot to me, you know, be able to go out there and be able to play good for those people that had your back this whole time, and I appreciate them a lot for that. How does a game like Wake Forest, where you're on the road, you're battle tested, mm -hmm. double overtime? Coming back to Death Valley and what should be an emotional game versus NC State, how does that kind of help you guys? I think it helps us a lot. Uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that we can learn from. And I think just coming back here, playing at home, I mean, playing every home game is great. I think this is our this is our third home game this year, and we only get seven of them this year. So each and every home game we play is a big game, no matter who we're playing. And there's always a time for us to go out there. Coach Sweeney says it's a time for us to go out there and put on a show for our fans. Like we have, I know I view it as we have an obligation to be able to play our best game for our fans here. You know, there's 85,000 people that come to our games, and you never know one of those, one of those people is going to be your first time playing. This is going to be the first time seeing you play. So it's my obligation as a player and everybody on this team to go out there and play our best game for that one person because you never know. It could be their last game seeing us play or it could be their first game. You want to be able to have put on your best performance for them. Just an interesting word being used up here today, swagger. I saw Will yeah. Sweeney in the press box a couple of weeks ago. He yeah. saying, if DJ gets that swagger back, watch out. Mm -hmm. And then Kyle Richardson was saying this offense needs that swagger. Do you mm -hmm. feel like you guys are, are getting there? Do you feel like yeah. you personally – yeah, no. Nah. You go out there and you're mm -hmm. like, this is going to happen. Yeah, no, nah, I feel like definitely as an offense, man, we keep getting better each and every game. And I think the sky's the limit for what we can do on offense. And I feel like last week, a lot of stuff started to come together. I feel like we did a really good job of growing in the right directions. Put a lot of yards of offense, ran the ball well, had a, had a lot of time in the pocket. Uh, I mean, I think I only got sacked once. And I'll take that, that sack was kind of on me, got to throw it away. But it was, I had a lot of time back there. I think one of the first touchdowns probably had like eight seconds back there. I mean, there was really no one around me. And I was just chilling in the pocket. I know there's a couple of pictures people, uh, one of our media people took, and I'm just in there, and like the pockets is huge. It's like there's no one there. And but I think just each and every game, man. I think the confidence grows from practice and our preparation. I feel like the biggest thing we've been doing a good job of is preparation and practice. Each and every day, we come out real serious. We come out ready to practice, starting on Monday today, with our film work from the practicing and just leading on throughout the week. I think we have a bunch of guys on the team that are willing to put in extra work and just willing to come out here and compete. Was there ever a time last year where you felt like you you personally lost that swagger, or was it just a matter of? The results maybe didn't match your belief of what you could do. Uh, I think uh, I'm about doubt or like lost my swagger, but I think kind of results uh, didn't. I, I always put in work and stuff like that, but I felt like it was just sometimes like, man, maybe I got deep a little deeper, uh, got a deep a little a little bit deeper, and uh, I feel like this year I just try to put everything out on the table from the off season to the summer to the season, each and every week. Just go out there, put everything I can, this, this know my back of my mind that I did everything possible for myself to be ready for the game. And I feel like each and every week, that's my mindset, just not to leave anything out on the table. Yeah, just, was, I've seen you multiple times as you run for a first down or something, mm -hmm. get up and point or yell. You seem more more animated than most of any time yeah. last year. Uh -huh. is that, does that speak maybe that some of that swagger and confidence? Yeah, I think for me that was one thing I want to be able to be go out there and be this more emotional, you know, be able to like let my emotions fly. I feel like uh, my whole life I ain't really been emotional, like letting like things come out and just kind of just for me it's more just like just going out and just playing, having fun, like showing whatever my emotion is and just coming out there and just having fun. So I think that's more what it is, just coming out there, just having fun, playing with my emotions, not keeping anything in and just having fun. Davis Allen was just talking to us. He had said that he would go to war with you. So mm -hmm. to have you know that kind of a tight end that you know I can just throw that thing up and he's probably going to come down with that thing. Sure. You know, what's what's that kind of? 
Man, I appreciate Dave saying that. I go to war with that guy too. But uh, he made some incredible plays this weekend that I'm glad a lot of people got to see because, I mean, he makes a lot of plays like that in practice. And, I mean, he's an amazing tight end. And be able to have a guy like that that's well-respected on this team, like Davis Allen, probably one of the most well-respected guys on the team from the way he works and the way he pre prepares and the way he plays is means a lot to me. So I appreciate Davis for saying that. DJ, you guys are leading the ACC in third down conversions after maybe not being so good at it last year. Yes, sir. How have the coaches kind of helped emphasize that? Have they done things differently to make it easier for you guys to pick up those third downs? Uh, I think coach, first and foremost, I think Coach Streeter has done an amazing job on third down, and as long as and also as well as play calling throughout each and every play, first, second down, doing a great job of setting us up for success. And I feel like third down, man, it's a down where you got to go out there and get it. I feel like it's a down that you got to have the want to to be able to go out there and execute. And I feel like each and every practice, we focus on third down on particular days. Each and every team they'll have their days they'll work on third down. I feel like that's one big thing Coach Street has made an emphasis on is third down. It's been every time we practice third down and practice to take it real, take it serious. And this is, I mean, it's a down that's going to make or break you. You know what I mean? So it's, it's that down, like third and long, or if it's third and short, that you're probably going to punt the ball if you don't get it. So you got to be able to go out there and continue drives going. And I feel like that's what makes great teams, to be able to keep drives going and make it last and be able to get those third downs. I know you know NC State's defense. What have you seen from them? Are they doing the same stuff? Are they taking mm -hmm. it up a level this year? What have you seen from them so far? Definitely. I think they've definitely taken it up a level. And I think they have a guy, great group of guys on that defense that play really fast, really well. I feel like every single one of those guys on the team with the defense and every single position are very good and very, very smart defensive player. They play fast. I think that's one thing that really stands out. They play fast, real physical. And I think overall, man, they're a really good team. Offensive-wise, they're very good. Uh, love the way Devin Leary plays the quarterback. I think he's a great quarterback. Uh, and I'm just excited for the game, man. It's going to be a great game with a great group of offenses and great group of defenses this game. It's going to be a good game. Okay. You famously blocked your dad on Twitter because you didn't want to read all the hype uh, that he was giving you <laughs> as a recruit. Um, after all you've been through the last year, do you take time and say, like, I'm going to enjoy people saying nice things about me this week? Or given that you've got NC State ahead of you, do you say, no, I'm still blocking all that out, not interested? Yeah, no, I just block out the noise. Uh, Coach Sweeney, I mean, I just, just come in each and every day, just want to work, but I don't get too much into the social media or like into the hype and don't try to look at it so much. So uh, Coach Sweeney has a famous uh, quote. He says, not too far from the penthouse to the outhouse. So it doesn't matter how well I'm doing that I can have one bad game, then I'll be right back in there in the outhouse. Or how bad I'm doing, I can get get shot up into the penthouse. So I just want to be able to just be able to handle success well, handle adversity well, and just stay level, stay level headed and just have that tunnel vision on and just continue to keep them working. DJ, how much of your confidence comes from confidence in the offensive line? Um, I think, I guess, yeah, I guess a lot. But I think the offensive line's been playing great. I mean, for me to be able to have the offensive line that I have this year and be able to have them, like, I, I have no worry in what they do. I feel like as a quarterback, when you, when you have an offensive line that you worry about or, like, worry about pressure, uh, it definitely affects you as a quarterback. And for me, this offensive line, I have no worry at all about if they're blitzing, whatever the defense is doing, that my eyes are always downfield. Like, I have no worry. I'd just be able to feel the pocket, be able to move, uh, be able to move left, right, up, and down. And I feel like offensive line has an amazing job. I mean, those guys, those guys played a lot of snaps. So man, fast. yeah, no, I think I, don't, I think we had. I know J Mac. He was telling me he said he played over 100 snaps counting special teams, with like kickoff, or like not kickoff, but field goal. I think he said he played like 100 snaps and be able to have an offensive line. I mean, we only played five guys. Coach Street was saying on the offensive line. I mean, that's a lot of snaps for guys. And man, they, get, they went out there in battles, man. And I know they would have put. They would have had to play if they had to go another overtime. They would have played 10 more snaps or 100 more snaps. So. Uh, just the way that Coach Austin's done a really good job with the offensive line, the way those guys, they battle each and every day, Putnam, Walk, Marcus Tate, um, Block A, my boy Blake, and Big J Mac. You know, they've just done an amazing job, and I'm super thankful for those guys, man. Another game with a touchdown pass to Bill Collins. Do you feel like that connection's at an all-time high? Uh, I think so. I think I think we can have we still have more room for growth. Me and Bo, but Bo, man, he's balling, man. I think each and every game, man, he's going to continue to keep better. Uh, the way he's going, I don't see him not catching a touchdown every single game. But uh, he's just a guy that comes in and work, man. The work is showing out there on the field, and I'm super excited for him, man. PCN out of Antonio Williams. Like you got confidence in yeah, nah, definitely. I definitely got a lot of confidence in that man. Zero. Uh, he's a dog, man. Uh, comes in the work, 
Hey, he just puts in the work, man. He's a funny dude. Guy that comes out here, competes, uh, talks, talks trash at practice, talks trash in the game, and that's one thing I like about him, man. He just comes out there and just competes. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't really care that he's a freshman. He's just coming out there and just competes, man. That's what I love about him. Speaking of that, I noticed that the Wake Forest DBs were doing a lot of chirping out there mm -hmm. Saturday with the receivers. Is it yeah. fun when all that's going on? And were you hearing anything, you know, at the line of scrimmage too? I didn't hear anything at the line of scrimmage, but I mean, I mean, I. I Definitely guess. I mean, I feel like everybody talks trash on the field. I mean, there's not a lot of people that doesn't talk trash, or you do it in your own way. But a lot of people are always talking, talking on the field, and so I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, it is fun talking trash. I think it is. Who's the best trash talker on Clemson's team? Uh, I think Rook. I think Rook would be a good one. Yeah, Rook. 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 Rook is good, man. He's a good talk. He, he talks all the time. He talks trash about anything. And the big thing I like when he talks trash is like if you're down. I think it's the biggest thing. You can, it's hard. To, it's easy to talk trash when you're, up, when you're down, like in a basketball game. Pick a basketball game. You're still talking trash, or you like missing. You missed a three. You're still talking trash. And that's all I like. <laughs> yeah. So he does a good job talking trash. So what, what's your method of trash talk? What you mean? Why but how like, do you do it? Or do you do, you do it? I don't do it too much. I mean, I'm just trying to stay focused during the game. But I mean, sometimes, yeah. I mean, the motions fly. I mean, some somebody says something, definitely talking trash. But I just try to stay focused throughout the game. Definitely, yeah. I mean, there's definitely conversations out there like, man, it's just funny. Like, someone will say something, but it's just funny. Now you talk talking trash, you're just talking. Like, you'll say, it's the lineman will say something funny from the other team. It'll just start laughing. <laughs> if it's me or the whole offensive line or the whole offense, they'll just say something funny. But uh, out there on the field, it's definitely different. It's funny, though. Does somebody need to take a video of you and Root playing basketball together one time and turn the sound up? I don't know. I don't talk. I mean, I don't play too much basketball, but I've definitely been in where we play pickup games and Rook, Rook is always talking. But he talk, he talks trash no matter what, practice. And I think that's what makes Rook a great player. He comes out there and lets his emotions go. He plays, talks trash. And I feel like for Rook, when he talks trash, he's playing great. So, But I don't know. I mean, some of the pickup basketball games we do play at Fike, it does get pretty serious sometimes. Or like, remember like two years ago, we used to play at Epic out there with Amari and everybody. And that, those games were fun during COVID. There's fun games. He, three? he says he doesn't miss threes. Root? Yeah. Uh, everyone Everybody. misses threes. Even <laughs> Steph misses threes. But he, he he does make a lot of them, though. He does make a lot of them. Mm -hmm. DJ, uh, Trevor and the Jags had a big win yesterday. Did yeah. you keep in touch? Well, yeah. You had a big win this weekend. Yeah, he texted yeah, text me. Trevor texted me after the game, man. He said, he said, uh, he said he was proud of me. He said, great win. He said, just keep working, keep your head down. Don't yeah. listen to too much success. Don't listen to the to the noise. Just keep working each and every week. And I texted him. That he had a great game uh, versus the Chargers. Man, they look great. I mean, I'm excited to see uh, the weapons he has. I mean, the offensive line is playing great. The defense is playing great. I'm excited, man. The Jaguars are playing good, man. I mean, he's, that's a guy that's had success his whole life and. Uh, with a tough season last year, I knew he was going to be able to bounce back with the team. And I thought he still played good last year. But I think this year, man, everything's going to come to light. Everyone's going to see. Just like how he, how he killed it here, I think he's going to kill in the NFL, take, take the NFL by storm. Any questions for DJ from Zoom? Hey, DJ, Trevor Burson, SteveTigers.com. Uh, NC State plays uh, a lot of uh, dime coverage in the secondary. Uh, what, what kind of a challenge does that present for a quarterback? Uh, it definitely brings a challenge. You know, it's a little different than what normal defenses do. Play with that three high structure, like you're talking about with the dime. Uh, so it'll be a great challenge for us. Uh, Got to be able to get in the film room, be able to uh, look at the uh, tips and reminders, be able to know what's going on. So it'll be a great, it'll be a great challenge for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Matt Connolly with uh, ClemsonSports.com. I was just going to ask on that first touchdown pass where you kind of went through your reads. I know you talked about it a little bit, but just. Can you kind of take me through that play and, and what you saw when you finally uh, found Jake in the back of the end zone? Yeah, I uh, went to the right side of the field uh, for the concept we had there. I think it was double slants. Uh, DN drop right there. Didn't really have it. Came back to the field to work the other side. Thought I had Jake early on the corner route behind the corner, but I didn't think, uh, I thought the corner did a good job sinking underneath it. I guess I could have, I guess I might have been able to throw. I was looking at it yesterday, but uh, the offensive line gave me a lot of time to be able to stay in the pocket. Guys are just moving around trying to find open windows, and Jake did a good job running the back end line. Uh, put a ball where he can be able to catch it, and he made a great catch. And just your advanced status wise, and just your accuracy and all that kind of stuff is way up from last year. Is there anything in particular you look at from an accuracy standpoint to why you've been so much better this year? 
Uh, I don't think anything particular. I feel like uh, I guess the stuff I worked on in the off season. I mean, a lot of stuff I worked on just be able to just be the best uh, accurate, be able to have the best, uh, be able to be the best footwork, uh, be able to stay in the pocket. So I've done a really good job, be able to stay in the pocket, uh, manage the pocket, and be able to stay uh, pretty loud on my feet, and just be able to just manage the pocket. I feel like that's one big thing. Have a great base. I feel like I've done a pretty solid job. There's still definitely stuff for more improvement, but I feel like I've done a solid job with my base, and I feel like that's where a lot of accuracy starts from. Uh, would you say again? Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, I was just saying, how nice has it been to see kind of some of that stuff you did privately this off season, all off season mm -hmm. work, and still carry over into the game and have so much success? Yeah, no, it's always nice, man. It's always nice to see the work you put in and be able to have uh, have the results that you want to have, and it's been great. Uh, I mean, to just be able to have the fruits of your label and come out there and just come out all the work you put in and to see the success that you have from certain drills that you work on and you feel it in exactly in the game, and it comes out to where exactly where you want it to be. So it's been great. Hey, DJ, this is Anna with Clemson 24-7. Uh, we've talked a lot about your, your weight loss and, and how that – makes you more mobile, um, but still you're a big dude and obviously a, a strong guy and we saw, I think that's pretty evident this season in the pocket when you're able to kind of withstand some pressure, withstand some hits. Um, do you think that's one of the more overlooked part of your games is just the strength that you have in the pocket? Uh, I mean, I get. I don't. I don't really know how to answer that. Uh, I mean, I guess. I guess. I guess it's a great thing to have. I don't know if it's overlooked. Uh, I mean, I just try to be able to just stay up. I guess I do a solid job be able to stay up and just trying to be able to like have shake defenders off. And I don't know. Just it's kind of just to feel the game. I don't really know if it's from strength side or just. I don't know, there's a lot of quarterbacks to be able to do that. I guess sometimes when I do, it gets a little highlighted more. But it's been good though. I mean, I was just telling him, great game, man. Uh, I thought he played an amazing game. Uh, he had, would he have six touchdowns? Six touchdowns. I thought, man, there's some throws out there. I was watching. I'm like, damn, that was a good ball. Uh, he put it on the money. I was like, I didn't know there's a couple times in the back of the end zone. Like, I think Nate had great coverage on one receiver, and he put it in the back of the end zone where no one else can catch it but his receiver. And he was doing that all game long. And I, I think Sam Hart was an unbelievable quarterback. I think his accuracy is unbelievable. I think he does a really good job by giving his receivers a chance. But I think the biggest thing about what Sam Hartman makes him great is how tough he is. I mean, he's in that offense where you're out there, like, you got to block. You're blocking the DN. He's taking the DN. The DN's running right into the back of his helmet because he's shielding off a DN for his running back. So I think that's one thing that I would have to say that's a big part. I think what I love about Sam Hart is just how tough he is. I mean, he's getting out there getting destroyed some plays because of how the offense is by an RPO game. And he just gets right back up and just throws a dime the next play. I think that's the biggest thing that I like my most, what I like about Sam Hartman the most, is how tough he is. And speaking, and speaking of Sam Hartman, there's so many great quarterbacks in the ACC. You're getting ready to face another one on Saturday. Uh, but you were named uh, ACC quarterback of the week. Uh, your first uh, recognition since uh, you were twice named uh, player of the week as a freshman. Uh, just, just how good does that recognition feel? Uh, it feels great, man. It's a great honor. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm very thankful for that. But, man, it doesn't carry over to this week, so I just want to come out each and every week, come out and just be able, be able to play my best game. So it starts throughout the week, the preparation. I'm super thankful for that. I just want to continue to keep working. Thanks, DJ. Thank you. All right. Thank you, DJ. Uh, that'll wrap us up for today.